Sweet. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Ice Cut Podcast. My name is Dana. I'm one of your hosts with my other girl. I'm Casey. What's up, guys? Oh, sorry. I just totally talked to you. (laughs) No, you're good. With my other girl, Casey. We don't really have a routine for this yet, so we just kind of like dive for it. (laughs) Um, But this episode, we're going to be talking about nationals. Um, Just a little recap, like our experience and like, you know, what we did during the event and like all the fun stuff that happened. Uh, I will say, don't mind the orange beast that's on the screen. That's my cat. His name's Winston. He probably won't leave me alone, but, but Casey, how was nationals for you? Nationals was a whirlwind. I got to go a day earlier than expected. So I got in at like 2 a.m. on Friday because I left Thursday night. Um, And the time change was disastrous. I am still recovering. I've been sleeping until like 9, 30, 10 o'clock every day. I feel like I hung over college student, except it's just like sleep because like I don't drink because I'm lame. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, it's been, it's been rough getting back to schedule, um, nationals itself though. It was so fun to be there to watch, to be around everybody again. Um, it was definitely an interesting vibe being in Vegas. I learned, I really don't like Vegas and I don't think I'll ever be going back. (laughs) Um, but it was very convenient to have like the rink attached to the hotel and have like restaurants in there. So you didn't have to like go out and do anything. And like things were open when you were done skating at like 10 o'clock at night, which was kind of nice rather than like starving after you're at the wrinkle day. So, um, yeah, it was cool. How about you? Um, yeah, I, I realized I would agree. I think Vegas is just not my vibe. I'm just not someone who likes to like gamble. So I know we have a lot of friends that like enjoy that like late night party scene, or there's still a lot of people that like enjoy that late night party scene. Just is definitely not like our vibe. Um, but yeah, I got in, when did I get in? I got in on Wednesday and it was like just like a little bit of a culture shock. Like there's casinos in the airport. Like that's just wild to me. Um, but no, I had a really fun time. I loved the event. I liked that it was convenient that the hotel, you could literally walk from the hotel to the rink without having to like get an Uber and like, yeah, having food open when you're done with the competition late at night is really convenient because most of the time it's like, okay, well, what's open? Oh, nothing. Okay. Well, I guess we're going to starve or eat snacks in the hotel. <laughs> um, Absolutely. No, it, was, it was an awesome event. I I had a lot of fun seeing a lot of different people and like, you know, networking again and seeing all my favorite officials and seeing all my favorite friends. So it was fun. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. I will say I was really surprised that in like the upstairs of the rink, there was no dress vendors, which was like one of the things that shocked me. They had all of the skate vendors like normal, but, and like, I guess maybe there wasn't a lot of food ones because like the rink owns that, but they had like the built-in like snack bars and stuff. They had like dip and dots and like the, the usual, but there was no dress vendors. And I found that like quite shocking. Yeah, normally there's like, what is it, like Del Arbor's usually there and then like two or three others. Yeah, like I don't know who, I think Del might have retired or I think, I think she might be done, but like I went to Boston Classic last year and they had like two or three dress vendors there. So I was surprised that at Nationals there wasn't any. Maybe they don't make a ton of money from synchro skaters, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Well, I but... also normally, um, normally Larry, who usually does like skaters landing, is typically at national mm-hmm. too. So I wonder if it was just a really far like flight for him to like take all that stuff or whoever is in charge of usually skaters landing where they have all like the college apparel. So like the UMich mm-hmm. stuff, Adrian, Western Michigan, Miami, like he usually has all that stuff. So I was surprised to like not see him there. But yeah, I didn't yeah, that's a good point. I didn't see a whole yeah. lot of stuff. Yeah, I don't know if it was maybe, yeah, like you said, the travel like costs or maybe it was just like the event venue is charging more to have us stand there or something but that was that was interesting like a notable like was missing yeah so we definitely spent our last day in vegas frumping around (laughs) the las vegas strip um we were miserable (laughs) so i woke up like aggressively like felt like a hungover college student on sunday morning the day of our flight and i because i texted you i was like I don't think I can make myself like get out of bed right now. Like, do you have any drugs with you? Like, do you have Dayquil or something? And you're like, no. Yeah, it, I was like miserable that day. Um, but we managed to get ourselves out of the hotel for the last day and 
go up and down the Las Vegas strip. I think uh-huh. I think we can both agree that it was a little bit, in our opinion, overrated. It wasn't something that like we would go back to do. <laughs> yes. I think it was, well, one, we walked to the Las Vegas strip from the hotel. So I think in total, we had like 45,000 steps for the day by the time we got back. So that was one thing Like we... We were, we're, we're trying to get our athletic selves back, I guess. I don't know. But, um, I think it would have been different if it was like, maybe like a Friday night and we were going out on the strip. Although I've heard that maybe it's not the place to be at night. It could be a little bit sketchy sometimes. I don't know. But, um, I think like maybe if we could go to a show or if we had like a bunch of friends and we were trying to like go out to like a bar or a club, not like that's really our scene, but once in a while it can be fun. Um, I think if that was the thing that was going on, then it would have been different, but like neither of us gamble. So like going like I feel like the only thing to do there during the day was like either go and eat or like gamble and drink indoors and like I'm not really trying to get drunk at 11 a.m on a Sunday yeah (laughs) like wait for a show to happen in the evening or something like I think if we were gonna go and like go for a couple hours and then go back and like take a nap and then like go to a show in the evening like it would have been totally different but yeah Yeah. it was killing time before we went to the airport and we were like how far can we walk is there is there a sitting place here? Can I can I sit down? <laughs> but, yes. Like it also didn't help that our flights were at like eleven something at night. Yeah. So we had the entire day, but we had no hotel. And like if we had made like maybe nice dinner plans or something like that, like nice plans to go out somewhere eat, planned anything at all, maybe it would have gone a <laughs> bit better. But um, yeah, we didn't do that. <laughs> so the two of us we just walked and walked and walked and then they shut down everything for the marathon so we had to walk back to the hotel yeah because we couldn't get an uber yeah it was nice though so we ended up low-key like crashing the Haydenettes hotel to to visit our friend molly uh shout out to molly mcmahon uh first year Haydenette, love her um but we we stopped at her hotel and just chatted with her a little bit. Cause you know, it's, it's been a while since we've seen her and like, she's one of our, our really good best friends. So it was nice to sit and like chat with her a little bit, but it was really funny. Cause then we were like, okay, well, we're going to go get our stuff and we're going to go to the airport. And then we saw them at the airport. <laughs> Should have just hopped on their bus or something and like paid them in yeah. food. <laughs> like, hey, can I like pay you a service fee? Can I like use your bus? <laughs> Please. Well, yeah. Let's get into the let's get into the competition because that's what everyone wants to hear about. They don't really want to yeah, hear. They don't, they don't care about hearing us like scurrying about the strip like rat girl. <laughs> Dude, the rat the rat on uh TikTok has really been like my best my best thing right now. Not my cat like growing up right. <laughs> Sorry if you heard that. That's disgusting. Anyway, it's okay. I didn't hear it, but Ted is over here, like aggressively chewing on his toy, which like stinks to high heavens, but it's like his oh. favorite toy in the world. It's like as old as he is, and it's disgusting, and it's the only one he likes. So oh. I'll just love that for him. But yeah, Ted, let's say hello. About... Hi, Ted. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what's happening ever. He's like, I'm a celebrity. It's fine. I love him. But yeah. So let's talk about, let's go in reverse order. So last time we talked about like the younger teams first, and then we finished with senior. So let's start mm-hmm. with senior and then work our way down. Dude, this dude is going to throw okay. again. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have left <laughs> him. Like he... It's just a hairball. It's fine. Anyways. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah. So um. I guess we can start off with, where do we start with this? Do you want to? I guess we with- should probably just start with Hayden Nets because their short program was absolutely beautiful, stunning. Um, I saw some of Synchro Twitter. I, I hate that we follow Synchro Twitter, but we do. But some people on Synchro Twitter were saying that they were overscored. And I would agree in the past, teams have been overscored at nationals. I think this situation, absolutely not. They earned every point they got. It was a stunning, flawless program. Like their yeah. short program, like chef's kiss it was beautiful like every transition flowed in and out so well you didn't know what was coming next but it was just like so perfectly crafted everything to the music like at first I thought like at the beginning of the season I thought that I would find the program boring but it was just like phenomenal yeah I think I think one thing they've they've done really well this year is like their skating skills are obviously exceptional I think their program mm-hmm. design is just like through the roof 
but I think they've done a really, really good job of finding stillness in their program where like you see a lot of other teams and mm. like and they're like they're moving their arms the entire time or like there's something that's always happening. But like there is a point in like Hayden's program where you're just watching art and you're not necessarily just mm-hmm. watching skating. So I think like kudos to Saga and her team for creating such an incredible program in that short program. Um And yeah, like I said, finding stillness is something that not normally we find in synchro. So it's been really interesting to watch that program grow. And I would agree like 80 points. Absolutely. I think that program was worth every single point that it earned, like every single GOE that was above a four and a five, like it was, it was really good. Like it really was. Yeah. It was just like, so, I mean, it wasn't simple, but it looked simple and like, so pleasing to the eye. Like it looked just very simple and beautiful. And I think it takes like really, really elite level skaters to take a program that actually is quite difficult and make it look so easy and flawless and seamless. So yeah. it was incredible. One thing, one bullet point that they probably got on every single one of their elements and every single thing that they did pretty much the entire weekend was effortless flow. That's one of my mom's like mm-hmm. favorite, like GOE like things is like, can you do what you're doing really fast? And can you do it with like the ease that like you're doing it with? So I think effortless flow was at the top of the list for them. Absolutely. Um, For their long program, um, that music has been stuck in my head since I left the competition now. And I like keep singing it, but very, very good as well. Like I thought it again, like pretty seamless. I think they had one fall, which I didn't even see. I don't think you saw it either. It was such a quick up and down. I think it was in the no hold, but again, like very minimal because none of us even noticed that it happened but um another really really great skate from them as well so i think that they could medal at worlds if not win i think they have a really really good shot of winning i definitely see them ending up on the podium but they won both their internationals this year and again they skated awesome at nationals so definitely setting themselves up well i'm really excited to see what they can bring out i would agree i think their long is good i think obviously their short is their way better program but their long definitely is Mm -hmm. the same vibe where it's like extremely effortless flowing like the choreography is awesome the program itself like you just see it move from one place to the next and again it's just it's just another piece of art it's like the, I think it's the first time that I've ever watched the synchro program and was like okay that's like art that's not necessarily like yeah. synchro. that's art so yeah again, big kudos to them yeah and I think it's also exciting because they're usually a team that peaks at the end of the season like yeah. some teams you know time to peak and like December and then just kind of hang on but they usually continue building all the way through worlds they're really good at doing that so um I think like their short program I don't really know how they can improve on that much but they're long although it was excellent I know that um they probably still have a bit more in the tank that they can add into that so it's gonna be really exciting to see what they can bring out agreed agreed all right our second place team our team Tyler senior oh my god I literally have never been so happy for a group of people in my entire life like I've been happy for people before like I've been happy for like my teams that I've skated on but like to watch that group of kids from the COVID season who like I've skated with some of them and even farther back than that from 2020 from the kids that we skated with to now being able to fully 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 get their experience and like have the skate of their lives like those kids skated so well in the free skate like I I am like speechless like I watched it back on YouTube earlier today because I was like oh on YouTube sick like I'm gonna watch it again and like you can tell that they gave every single bit of effort for the entire four and a half minute free skate and it was electric to watch it was incredible and like shout out to Joshi and Pammy for winning the performance award because like that was the performance of the competition like Hayden Nets might have won but like Sky took that one they did they crushed it absolutely completely agree I think it's so nice to see it like come full circle because I know a lot of those girls came onto the team new and it's been like a really long road for them to build especially for um Melski and Cass who were on that 2020 world team that then didn't get to experience it and they were both skating they were both competing at least one program so to have that to be there and then to have that taken away like I think this is probably so meaningful to them so really really excited I was again like I was I had no voice for the next three days because I was screaming so loud um it was really funny because I went skating this week uh 
at the local rank in Pensacola. And, um, one of the women who runs the rank, she was at nationals too. And she's like, you guys were so funny to watch. <laughs> I guess, I, I guess everybody saw this, but, um, oh my God, they were, they were just amazing. Their long, their short was good, but like, here's a couple mistakes. The long though was absolutely lights out. Like I, I rewatched it a few times on Peacock and I still think it looked good there, but it didn't have the same energy as being there in that moment in the rank, like yeah. being able to see their actual faces, their expression, the whole team, like they gave it everything they had and more, they left every ounce they had on the ice. And it was just like phenomenal. And I think huge shout out one sky senior got their first tens. They got three tens. Um, we and they weren't all from the same tens. either. We what? never got tens. No, never. And they weren't all from the same judge either. So I think that means a bit more. And then, um, that was about an 150 in their long, which is like mind blowing. Insane. Our, I think they were four points behind Hayden Nets, which is just crazy. Yeah. But and like our, programs are so different. It's kind of hard to compare, but like they gave it everything they had and they deserved it. Like our best free skate score ever when we competed was 2020 in spring cup, which was a 142. So even eight points mm-hmm. higher than our best free skate, which is awesome. Yeah. But I like, think what's also crazy is that both Hayden Nets and Sky Senior didn't get everything called either. They lost I think I think Hayden Nets lost two calls and Sky Senior lost three calls um in their long programs. So they're even though those are super high scores, there's still room for improvement on them. Yeah. I will say I will not forget Abby McGuire's face when she turned around after they like literally I was so happy. She turned around after they hit their ending pose. They waited, they bowed. And I will never forget the look on that kid's face. We made eye contact and she was just like elated. I was like, oh my God, Abby, like you just did it. So shout out to Sky Senior. Like you guys were phenomenal. We were, we we're very proud alum. Very, very proud alum. Yes. We were crying in the stands and we were just like, I need to go skate. And we both had the uh, yearly <laughs> mental breakdown where we were like, can I skate next season? how do I take all of my money and all of my time and try and figure out how to skate again? Um, and then I went skating and I realized that I can no longer <laughs> skate. I was humbled. Oh, I was trying to be as good as a Russian eight-year-old and do some cool uh, elbow slides and stab myself <laughs> in the shin. And I think I might've broke my shin. <laughs> nice. Nice. I'm like hobbling around, limping. It's fine. <laughs> nice. Um. Okay. So yeah, so happy. Our world team, Hayden Nets, Sky Senior, I think it's well-deserved. I think that was the correct world team. Again, we were predicting that it's going to be whoever can come out and just really go lights out. Whoever can put on the show is going to make that team. And that was what happened. So yeah. Um, moving on to Miami. That one was really unfortunate. I feel really, really bad. I think their short was good. I thought their short was mm-hmm. really good. Um. I don't know what the score difference was between um, Miami three and Sky, three points. So yeah. I personally thought Miami short program was amazing. I thought they skated it super, super well. I thought they were really clean. Um, so I was proud to see them like that close, knowing that like Sky had done so well internationally. It was really good to see yeah. like that point gap be really, really small. Because um, three points nowadays is like, that's so easy to, to just absolutely... Mm-hmm crush the next day but yeah I felt I felt really bad because I wanted them to skate perfect I wanted them to have that like Uh same lights out skate that Sky did um and you could tell that when they went on the ice they were just a little bit hesitant they didn't have that same spark that they've had the last two seasons Uh where they went into the free skate just so confident and so ready to go so I wonder if there was like a little bit of hesitation there or whatever it was but I really wanted them to come and skate lights out. So it was a very big, like, I wanted it to be a huge competition between the two, like Miami mm-hmm. and Sky, because we know that between the two of them for the next couple of years, it's going to be an insane back and forth. Like it could be one of those yeah. things like in Finland where like one year it's, you know, team unique and Rockets the next year it's Marigold and, and, you know, team unique, like it's crazy. Like you never know what's going to happen. So it's unfortunate they had the mistakes that they did and, I wanted, I wanted them to be, to be perfect. Cause that's what you want at nationals. You want everyone to be perfect. So. Yeah. You always want to see a battle of the best of the best. And it's always unfortunate when teams can't skate their best. And like, sometimes it's like flukes happen. Cause like 
I thought their short program was also beautiful. I think they might've had one fall and then the sky also had the fall in the short. So they yeah. were still pretty even there, but it was like not a distracting fall. I loved Miami short. The dresses I think were beautiful. I thought the whole package looked awesome. And I really enjoy their long program. Again, the dress is stunning. I think it was awesome. Um, but we ended up watching their, we watched, she, I didn't see senior short official, but I did watch senior long official and they had a few mistakes in the lifts there too. So I'm wondering if that kind of psyched them out going into it. Um, and that could have been like what brought a little bit of nerves for, uh, like coming into the competition and I've been in those shoes before. So it's definitely stressful if your lift doesn't go perfect at official, like I completely understand. Um, and again, like the death spiral an absolute fluke. Like if someone goes down in the death spiral, that's something that happens once a season like it happened to us at worlds in 2018 and it had never happened before and it's never happened again and it's just like bad bad luck is all you can chalk it up to yeah. it was really nice to see that that they covered super well they got that lift up with zero issues but then it was a different lift and like yeah it's just so sad to see because you feel bad for the girls on the team like you feel bad for the especially for the seniors because you always want them to go out feeling well because like again like our last skate or at least my last skate at that nationals, like we didn't skate all that well as a team. And it's always like, that's never how you want to leave it off. And we all want to see a really great battle out between both teams. So, and then like the best can actually win. So I feel really bad. I, um, our hearts with the girls there, but. But yeah, no, I mean, I'm excited to see where Miami goes in the future though. I know that obviously Carla and Leanne are leaving. So it'll be really interesting to see, Mm -hmm you know, who takes over the program and what that looks like and, you know, what kind of potential style changes will happen. And, you know, if they're an alumni of the program, I think there's a lot of unknowns with Miami right now, which I think is leaving a lot of people like really stressed out, but knowing us figure skating and knowing that like Carly and Leanne are not going to leave their program to someone who's not capable or, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever people's fears are, I know that Miami is going to end up being in really good hands, whoever they decide to put in that position. I think, I think there's people that are fully capable of, you know, taking that legacy that Miami has and continuing to build it. So I'll be very excited to see what happens with Miami in the future. Cause I think I completely agree. Like I'm really interested to see who ends up taking over the program. If they take somebody who's from the States or if they get somebody external, like maybe somebody from Finland or Sweden or something comes in, um, that could be interesting. And then the junior division this season has also been really, really strong. So they'll probably have some great incoming freshmen as well to help build the program more. So it'll be really exciting to see what they have uh, next season. Yeah. And then last in our senior division was Adrian college. I would love to say that I'm extremely proud of them. They got a new short program. I don't know if a lot of people knew that, Mm -hmm. but they got a brand new short program from the time I saw them at Porter, which was like early December to like early February or like mid February. That was crazy. That's a lot together. So shout out to the coaching staff for putting together a brand new Mm -hmm. short program with new music and, you know, re-choreographing everything like I can't imagine how stressful that is for the kids to have to, to redo all of that. I like, fortunately we've never been in that position where we had to re-choreograph a whole short program, but you know, kudos to them for, for doing that. I thought it that was pretty good. Um, compared yeah. to what they had before it, it made them look, uh, much more mature. I thought the music style was really, really nice. I think it highlighted them a little bit better than the music choice they had prior, but you know, I was very impressed with their short program for six me too um I thought this yeah I thought they skated well and I liked how they um they kind of added some beading onto the dress to make the dress fit the new music a bit better too which was really nice but yeah I they came out and they I didn't expect the new music change and I thought the program looked great I thought they did a really good job um I think they had a 56 which was significantly higher than their previous scores and like I know teams have had to change music before, but usually that happens at like September, October point of the season, not like December, January. So for them to be able to pull that out in like six to eight weeks is really, really impressive. So yeah, they should be really really proud of themselves. And I thought their Mm -hmm. free skate the next day was also really good too. Um, It looks like they didn't change too much of their free skate, Um, but yeah, I thought their free skate was good. I thought it was relatively clean. I think they had one fall in there, but for the most part, like it was pretty standard of how they've been skating all year. So it was nice for them to kind of finish on a high note um, with what was their highest score of the season between, I think, both of their programs. So 
kudos to them. I thought they did a really good job this year. Me too. I think they definitely, um, they started off the season a little bit with a little bit of difficulty and they definitely turned it around and really proved themselves to be strong. So hopefully they can come back and have a really good season next, the next year as well. Agreed. Agreed. All right, let's move on to juniors. Juniors okay. is wild. <laughs> Dude, junior was a showdown. Um, so I guess first place was Team Elite, which props I to them. It. I think we, we we were predicting that to happen. I think um, their short program, I just find absolutely stunning, uh, breathtaking. Like the music is incredible. The dresses, like I I think we've raved about this program yeah. every pod that we've done so far. So yeah absolutely love teams elite um the season like they just have the total package and then they're long um the one thing that was in the long i believe they had two falls both in the spin yeah. which now makes two competitions in a row there was falls in the spin so it'll be interesting to see if they keep that for worlds or not because i feel like it's also a fluke um yeah. i think this time it was one in the sit and then one in the 180 spin whereas yeah. at the last one it was just the 180 spin um it's also really nice to see them actually trying something more difficult and more creative in the spin though, than a lot of other teams that will just like check the box because you just need to do like two positions. So some people will just do the easiest possible yeah, to like get the points, which I totally understand, take less risk. Um, but it's really nice to see them going like above and beyond and trying to like push that limit, not just check the box, but do something truly creative and impressive. So yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see where they go with that, but I do really like the spin that they're doing. Yeah, I think it's I think it's super interesting. Like I think almost all of their kids do like the I spins or the 180 spins, which is like not normal for a lot of teams. Like maybe you have like a handful mm-hmm. of kids that can do it, but I think a majority of their team does the 180, if I'm not if I'm mistaken. I think they all do. I think they have half do the sit and half the 180 and then they flip flop. Yeah. So it's really it's really impressive. But yeah, I would agree. Um, very happy for them for finally getting their first national championship. I think this season, mm-hmm. like you said, is very well deserved. I think both of their programs put together a really awesome package. It shows that they can they can do two different styles. Like their short program is very is a very different style than their free skate, and their free skate is very intricate. It's very exciting to watch. Um, so big big fan of their their short program, but also like agreed that their free skate definitely helps them out so be very interesting to see how they do at worlds um because i know between them and sky which we'll talk about next um between the two of them they could end up one and two on the world podium like i have a feeling both of those teams will end up on the world podium it's going to be a matter of who's with them which i think it's going to end up being lay supreme for juniors um but what order is it going to be? I think it was announced. I think it's Lay Supreme and Nexus for Canada. Oh, I mean, you mean on the podium? On the podium, yeah. So it'll be a matter of like both USA teams, what order are they in? And I think it's going to end up being Lay Supreme because they were so, so strong last year. They've been really strong all season. Yeah. Like, I think it'll be Lay Supreme or Valley Bay. Yeah. It'll be a matter of like who else ends up on that podium with them because I think those two US teams are just so strong. Yeah, and then what order they end up in? Because I do think that Teams Elite got Skyliners at the last two events they competed at. Um, but again, Sky Junior Short was like uncharacteristic of them. Like they typically skate really clean, and they just had a few like flukes. Um, again, like falls that don't normally happen. Yeah. So um, that set them behind. But then they were able to come through and like, completely rally in the free skate and absolutely blow it out of the water. Oh and then God. teams elite again has like uncharacteristic falls in there long. So I think it's going to depend on who can stand on their feet and hopefully they can both just come out, like go skate lights out at worlds. That's everything you could ask for. And yeah, may the cards fall where they fall. Yeah. Can we talk about sky junior, junior free? Like, yes. Oh my God. I don't know Beautiful. what Joshi and Pammy have done this year, but both junior and seniors free skates were incredible. I don't know what they did, if they did anything, if the teams themselves are just really, really strong this year that they like rallied within themselves, but oh my God, watching junior short or sorry, junior free was incredible. Like they were so good. Like their spin. Oh my God. If it didn't get all threes, fours and fives, I was going to cry. Like it was so good. See, that's the completely opposite. Like, I feel like they're taking the other approach to the spin than Teams Elite is. Like, they're doing, like, a much 
Well, honestly, some people just like check the box and they're, they're not checking the box. Like they're, they're doing camel spins and making sure every single one is perfectly in sync. And it is insane to watch. So I'm like, I think between the two of them, like either those are the two approaches you need to take either have like a more difficult and creative and interesting spin or have like something that's a bit more simple, but executed like flawlessly. Cause I don't think any other team puts as much, maybe the ones that do pair spins, I'll give them that. But like, I don't think any other team has given as much effort into matching their spins up as Sky Jr. has. And it's so pleasing to the eye to see, like, it's truly incredible. To to be a fly on the wall at a Sky Jr. <laughs> when, they, when they do the spin, I can only imagine, I can only imagine how stressful that must be to be that one person that's like, I'm not a strong spinner. Please, for the love of God, please don't be my day. Cause you know, sometimes, and we've been there, like sometimes it's just mm-hmm. your day and like, you're not, you're not doing your best. And you're like, I hope I don't fall down. And I really hope I don't get yelled at. But like, like I remember watching some of their practices sometimes and like, man, I don't want to, I don't want to ever have to do a spin ever. Like, I remember when they had the the leg out spin, so like the more simple mm-hmm. position and just watching their practices and like, it's so satisfying when they line it up, but like, it's so stressful to get there. It's so tough, like as a coach to get everyone to like bend and pop and like be in the same exact position and like rotate together. So like kudos to Josh for getting them like to being able to do that. And like, it's, it's insane to watch, but like God, to be, a, to be a fly on the wall during those practices my god yeah yeah it's like everyone has to step in on the same angle like step in parallel with the long boards and then like when you rotate the 180 degrees so then you're going to pop up and straighten your knee at the same time and like everything has to be perfect but then if you have a girl who's really tall and a girl who's really short like yeah i don't know, I don't know. good luck <laughs> yeah who ended up in third i can't remember um i think it was team image let me pull up the results i'm pretty sure it was team image and then fourth was lexus yes i love team image programs i was really happy that they got um featured on nbc olympics which i thought was really really cool for the short program yeah so shout out to them that was really awesome because normally that doesn't happen like the nbc or like nbc doesn't normally like cover anything for synchro so it was nice to be able to see team image get featured for that on short I don't remember what their score was, but I, like, huge. um, I have it up right now. They had a 70.43 for the short and a 121 for the long. Oh, cause they ended up in second after the short, correct? Yes. Yes. They were in second after the short. And I think sky was in fourth after short. We didn't go, we didn't go over that, but yes. Um, yes. Yeah, sky was in fourth after the short, but then rallied and won the long by like seven points. So huge shout out to them. That was incredible. Um, we just raved about the about their long, but yeah, image was in second after the short, which was really nice to see because their last skate, like I think it was two weeks before at the Marie Lemar Trophy, was again like not their best. Yeah. Um. So really happy to be able to see them come out really really strong at nationals for both programs. Yeah, I was happy for Team Image. You know, having having such a strong short program and then going in and crushing the free skate. I was very excited for that. Mm-hmm. Cause also like, like we said in the last podcast, like I love watching their programs cause I'm extremely entertained the entire time. And like, mm-hmm. you know, people are like, Oh, well you have to like understand the program. No, you don't. You have to watch yeah. the meeting and you have to be entertained. And I was completely yeah, entertained like, the whole time. Yeah. Like I think it would be a fun program to skate. Like I like the arms. I like the choreography. I like the music, like all the teams that are skating is kind of like trap music. Like I'm like, but like, that would be so much fun. Like, it's like the only time we'd want to go to the club. (laughs) Yeah. So shout out to their coaches for having like such unique dress designs too, because it's something that we don't normally see in the U S and I don't, they kind of look like they're inspired almost by like Rockettes free skate dresses from last year, which I think they might be having, um, I think they might've switched to their dressmaker actually. So again, it's not something we normally see in the U S which is awesome to see a team kind of branching out from like the normal like don't get me wrong hazel makes incredible dresses i've used her as a dress designer before obviously we've worn hazel's dresses for a while um but it's nice to see something that's a little bit different and not so like 
I guess you could say quote unquote in the box for U.S. skating or U.S. figure skating. So shout out to their coaches for going out of the box for their dresses and a little bit out of their box for their their music choices. I think it really, really put them apart um, and made them really interesting to watch all season. Agreed. Okay. And fourth, we have Lexettes. Um, I think I watched them on the stream. I was watching Junior on the plane. So um yeah. you probably have more because you were able to say it to watch it in person. Yeah, I watched their I watched their free skate in person and it was the best free skate I've watched them skate. I remember um watching them in Boston and just having an unfortunate fall and poor girl like they she fell in the beginning of their lines and their lines moved from one end of the ice to the other and she unfortunately happened to be on the far side of the line so like poor girl got it took her forever to get back in in Boston but you know, it was really awesome to see them, this competition put out two really, really good skates. I also didn't get to see junior short because it was on Wednesday because mm -hmm. yeah, we put it on a Wednesday. Why? <laughs> junior short should be on Thursday. So everyone can watch it. Yeah. Um, but it was watching a long their, competition. Yeah. Watching their free skate was really good though, because you could tell that they like put all their energy into it and it was really the skate that they needed to have. Um, and it, it mm. kept them on the podium as well, which is really, really awesome. I, I loved watching them. Yeah. Play. Yeah. I, um, I think they're short, like again, just watching it over the live stream, but I think it was good. I'm impressed that personally, I don't know if I, I don't know if I would like to skate to music that gen that has no sort of beat to it. Yeah. Like they were very impressive with how together they were for that. Like they just skated really together as a team. So I think it's very impressive that they were able to pull that off because I think it'd be really, really hard for pretty much any team to accomplish that. Like the entire program, there's yeah. not any point that's like a steady beat to it. So I'm um, very impressed. And they were in third after the short. So again, another, like, I'm happy they got to pull off two really good skates. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really impressive, like for their coaches to, to put together a piece of music that like, because if you think about it, it's truly all like nature sounds. That's really, that's really what it is. It's not something that's super, again, like beat focused, or it's not something that you would normally hear. So being able to like, you know, skate together to that and their coaches to find something that's a little bit more, like you said, like out of the box kind of feel to it. Like I'm very impressed as well. I think that, I think it was awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think it really also like shows off off their skating skills even more because they definitely in my opinion have the best skating skills in the junior division like it's absolutely beautiful to watch them skate like so effortless so bouncy um and like lee's brought that nexus style to them and it works and it works wonders and i think that worked really well with the music as well yeah i would agree who ended up in, in fifth, fifth we had bondi yes uh, sorry what were you <laughs> no i was just asking who ended up in fifth because i don't remember so I know the podium, but I don't remember who ended up like, what was the order between like five through nine? Mm -hmm. I thought Blades, their short program this year has always been really, really good, but I watched their free skate in person and I thought they were awesome. I thought they did a really, really good job. They kind of like went through and like enhanced their free skate from the last time I saw it, which was in, because I didn't watch them during their international season, but I watched them in Boston and then it was a little, um, not lack of energy, but like, I wanted more like giddy up from them in like a certain part of the program. So to kind of see that they almost like adjusted that a little bit and added to it, it really gave me that like little oomph that like I wanted from them when I saw them in Boston. So shout out to them. I thought they did a really good job and I, I love their dresses. I love their free skate dresses. Me too. So pretty. Like, I love that. Like, I feel like they have like a signature style. Like yeah. they had like the Lady Gaga program. They had like the Backstreet Boys. And I feel like I always kind of expect almost like an upbeat, really fun program that I would love to skate myself from them. And like, I'm always like, I wish I could be on the team and the dresses are always stunning. Like, yeah, I really like their long there. If they tend to put in like a lot of tricks and stuff like that too, which makes it exciting. It's fun to watch. Like they always have such high energy. Like you can tell they love the program. So they, um, opened, they opened their free skate with two double toes, by the way. Yeah. Right. I saw that during official. And I was like, or er, no, during the competition I was like, yeah. I would not want program. to do a double toe in competition. <laughs> the two girls that do it though are like super strong freestyle skaters. So like for them, I think a double toe is like, I could do that in my sleep, but like, yeah. But opening your program with a double toe. Okay. Yeah. Jen, funny. Good job. Like that's impressive. <laughs> well, that's like, I was talking with Megan at nationals because she skated the My Fair Lady like sets program and it was her and remember who the other one was, but they did double flips in the middle of the program. And I was like, ew. 
you're dear god no no I would not want to do a double flip she was like yeah so I was so nervous every time I was like I would be too like that is a big risk I would cry but they nailed them every every competition I believe they nailed them so good for them awesome couldn't be me <laughs> nope um and six we had northern nets I was actually I'm not gonna lie surprised to see them that low because they've had such a rock star season and they've been so strong I was actually kind of hoping to see them a little bit higher not that obviously like you want like certain teams to place a certain way but like I expected them to be a little bit closer to the podium because usually they are like sixth or seventh at, at nationals but I was expecting them to be closer to like fourth place or even potentially winning a national medal this year um just because again they've, they've yeah. had a rock star season so yeah, so I pulled up the scores and um Lexettes were in fourth with a 183. Fondy and uh Northern Nets both had 167s. Oh wow. I think it was that Northern Nets were in eighth in the short, but they got fifth in the long. So that uh oh, like in the long cool. they were six points behind Lexettes. Um, but in the short, yeah, they were in eighth, which was um kind of surprising. I think that looking at our fantasy synchro and then looking at like Twitter and stuff. I think a lot of people thought they were going to be in fourth or like place really high. I think a yeah. lot of people thought they were going to make the podium. Um, and I do really like their short program. So I'm not sure if they missed a lot of calls. I know they do go for a lower pivoting block than a lot of the other teams too. Um, I think they only are trying for a block three and a block four, which could pay off if they do it really well. I don't know um, what the protocol showed, um, but their long is beautiful. Uh, yeah excited to see if they can keep growing like hopefully this wasn't like a one-hit wonder season for them yeah. but they can continue building that program um or i would also be really happy to see because their collegiate team i think got third i think it'd be cool if they ended up uh like merging junior and collegiate to make a senior team and kind of growing the senior division because they kind of have a monopoly out in minnesota yeah. so if you're listening um <laughs> yeah like hopefully not elite 12 hopefully full-blown senior i think they definitely have the like the skill level they need in order to do that. And like, historically we've seen a lot of teams like Chris Letts have like novice junior cross skaters and stuff like that. So I think it'd be really exciting if Northern Nets kind of grew their junior team into a senior team, then they could keep all those skaters there. Yeah. And kind of like, I think that would be awesome to see and then kind of bring back the senior division. Cause lately it's been lacking. <laughs> Went from like 10 teams in 2017 to like four. Yeah. Well, I'm sure, they're, I'm sure they're already 10 steps ahead of us. I'm sure they're, they're already playing. Oh yeah. I'm sure we're not the first ones thinking this, but <laughs> yeah. um, it'd be exciting to see that. But um, either next year, I expect their junior team to be really good, or hopefully we see something even bigger coming from them. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, DC edge was in seventh. They were sixth in the short seventh in the long and seventh overall. I liked their free skate this year. I'm really only commenting on free skates just because I didn't really watch the short program in person. Cause again, it was on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Um, but I thought their free skate this year was awesome. I think the idea of like the magic was like not something that normally people like think of. I thought it was a really unique um like free skate idea. So I liked they the always have the cre most creative ideas. Like the the clue was it clue that they did? That was clue. Yeah, it was like yeah. um not this past season. Yeah, the season prior, like they skated to mm -hmm. like a clue theme program, which was so incredibly unique and so incredibly like exciting to watch because it was like yeah to play that game when I was a kid yeah like, like really really creative they always have great ideas see I personally liked their short better this season um and it was really nice to see that they actually skated it like very well very well at nationals um because I think they struggled with it a bit I want to I think it was French Cup I was watching yeah. and they had a few falls um but I liked the music a lot I liked the dresses I liked the whole program so uh, it was nice to see them be able to skate it well yeah um in eighth we had Hawkettes. I was kind of bummed. Kind of bummed to see Hawkettes is slow. Yeah, I mean it's it's hard this year because all the teams are so good too. Cause we're like, we thought that Northern Nets should place higher, but at the same time, Lexettes were so good. And like we were like, I also want Fondy to be in fourth. But then like I we want, want all of the teams to be well. It's hard when the whole division has gotten this strong. Yeah. Cause now there's there's not there's not a lot of junior teams anymore. So with them only having nine of them, you have to be either like on your A game and you have to be like your absolute best when it comes to like these events, because like you, like the minute you make a small mistake, like you end up at the bottom and like, not to say that like 
eighth in the nation is bad because like Hawkeyes are not a bad team. Hawkeyes are incredible this year compared to you know last year's set of programs. They they look like a brand new team, but mm-hmm. it's hard. It's like you said, it's hard when everyone is so good because you want everyone to be in fourth place, but you can't all be in fourth and you can't all win. So it's hard. Yeah. But I liked um I really well. like their programs this year again. Like didn't get to see them in person, so it's a little bit harder to comment on them. But they've definitely grown a lot through the season. I think it probably helps because I believe they have a couple girls that are cross skating to Elite 12. So I'm sure that kind of is helping develop their skating skills even more and being able to bring that down to the team and kind of lead the junior team through that. I'm sure that's um a benefit for them too. Yeah. But I, I love their free skate. I think standing to drops of Jupiter was such a such a unique thing because it's pretty much it's a really popular song but it's not one that you would hear it and you're like oh yeah i, sh- I, can-, I can make a synchro program to that but like the way mm-hmm. Lynn sarah put it together like their dresses were gorgeous they like fit the music their skating style mm-hmm. i thought all of it was just was just amazing like i said i think they're a brand new team from last year and it was really fun to watch them skate really well but again not yeah them ending up in eighth place means that they're a bad junior team whatsoever. They're quite quite a good junior team. It just happens. That yeah, that's where the the rankings lay out. So, yeah, I'd also be really interested to see um like how many of these teams are like older junior teams versus younger ones. And like it's also now that junior the age level has gone up so that you can be nineteen on junior now instead of aging off at eighteen then like instead of having like mainly all high school seniors and leaving like the teams like Lex I know get a lot of like college freshmen yeah um I think they have more kids in college that are like coming to the Boston area on like Lex sets whereas like I know Skyliners is generally a younger junior team I guess you could say because I don't think they have many girls that are in college skating on the team yeah. um but depending on like which of these teams have a lot of graduating seniors that don't plan on continuing to skate or like incoming people like a lot of turnover versus a lot of girls staying it'll be interesting to see how these teams switch up next year because again like I think they were all neck and neck like Hawks that showed a huge improvement if they can keep the entire team together for next season then I think that they're going to be a real force to be reckoned with whereas if some of the other teams have a lot of turnover and have a lot of new skaters it might be a little bit harder for them to um like get to the same level because they can kind of pick up where they left off and continue growing yeah absolutely and then our last one was uh, we had Starlights in nine. Starlights. I felt bad for them because let me not start there. That's a that's a really poor way to start. I am very proud of them this year for like their resilience and their programs. I thought that they came out in California and did not have their best skate in the beginning of the year. Boston, they came out and absolutely crushed both of their programs. So it's been really awesome to watch them grow the entire season. Um, I think they did have a lot of turnover with their team, which which kind of allowed them to have a little bit more of like a rebuilding year. Um, but I will say watching their free skate in person, like huge fan. I love like the jungle theme. I thought their dresses were super, super intricate. But like we've been saying with like all the rest of these junior teams, it's not that they're a bad team. It's just that all these, all the junior teams are really, really good. So even though Starlights ended up towards the bottom of the pack for both of their programs, it's not to say that they're a bad junior team. I think that they're a really talented junior team. I thought I think that their coaches do a really good job of having really intricate and interesting programs to watch. And I want to see them continue to grow and like be better because again, just because you're at the bottom doesn't mean that you're bad. That's my opinion. It's also national like. <laughs> yeah. I think it's kind of nice, like even though we have less junior teams to see them being so competitive, like all nine of them made team USA, like that's a real testament to the like quality of the skating because like they wouldn't get a team USA assignment if they like an international assignment, if they weren't deserving of it, like USA right. skating isn't just going to give them one of those for funsies. Cause they want to send everyone like they're putting money into it. Like they have like some stake in the games. So they're like seeing as every team earns those. And like, I feel like the, like rankings, like um, where all the teams placed at the various competitions have kind of like flipped all over the place all season as well. Like Northern Nets beat Team Image and then Team Image um, like won nationals last year and they were second yeah. in the short. And then like Lexettes were, I think last in the long at Boston, but they were fourth and like got third in the short here. And like everyone's been all over the place all season, which is really exciting. It gives me a lot more Finland vibes. Like I think this year, 
I want to say that uh, Musketeers were like fifth or sixth, which I was like kind of shocked by. And I watched them and they were good at yeah. French Cup. So I was like, how is this happening? But it's kind of nice to get like a taste of that Finland vibe coming to the US. And like the teams, it can go anyway. It keeps the division interesting. It's really yeah. fun to watch. And like sometimes it ends up a bit more predictable. Like unfortunately, we've seen Hawkettes and Starlights at the bottom a bit more. But that's by no means saying that they're bad. Like they're probably younger teams this year and next year they'll be higher up where some of the other teams will be experiencing their rebuilding years. They're just like on different cycles. Yeah. And that's, and uh, you know, cause like when you think about like Finland, especially like Finland's like senior and their junior teams, obviously they don't have a ton of them, but like you never look at the Finnish junior teams and you're like, oh, well, like that's a bad team or like the Finnish senior teams, however they end up, you're never like, oh, well, that's a bad team. Like if Marigold wins Finnish nationals, Rockets end up in third and Team Unique ends up in second. It's like, okay, well, they're not bad. Like all the all the Finnish Finnish teams are so good that like it can go literally anywhere at any time, which is I think, you know, really exciting to see in the US. Like now we have, you know, three really, really strong senior teams, and we have nine strong junior teams that could really go anywhere at any time. And it's it's been very apparent the entire season like you said like team image ending up in 10th at one of their internationals but then ending up on the podium at nationals it's like it's crazy yeah um so going we skipped elite 12 so let's touch on elite 12 for a second do we want to take a fantasy synchro break yes we should do that (laughs) thank you for reminding me okay so for fantasy synchro i tallied up all the points um I think that a lot of people, there was a couple of twists that we weren't all expecting. So I think one of them, a lot of people picked star mates for intermediate as did I. And, um, I heard they were incredible all season. I thought they looked great at nationals. And then the score was lower than I think we were all expecting. I think they ended up in fifth or sixth, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, I think they missed a couple of calls, which was disappointing for them. Cause I thought that they looked really, really good. Um, I think almost everyone picked teams elite junior, um, pretty, pretty easy choice to make because they didn't medal at nationals or they were fourth at nationals last year. So they were in a different division. So they were one of the best picks to make. Um, but overall we have a three-way tie for first place at this point, um, between excellent guests, uh, Mm -hmm. the ice is right. And the third one is, um, Team VSCCB. So I know two of the three of those. I know Leanne Filosa and Katie Vermillion. So shout out guys. Um, still rocking the fantasy synchro vibes. Um, we'll post all of the results. I have like the Excel spreadsheet or whatever. We'll post it on our Instagram if you want to go and look it up. And then for round two, it's going to be junior worlds. So we're trying to figure out the best way to divide that up. If it's going to be by like world ranking or placements at last year's nationals or like placement in the challenger series or something so if you have any sort of feedback on which you think is better let us know but um yeah we'll try and get like a winner between all three like nationals junior world senior worlds yeah cool fantasy synchro i played and i was bad i'm always bad at fantasy synchro yeah i'm not gonna lie you didn't do so well (laughs) that was really bad We have 61 points and our leaders currently have 85. This is why I stopped playing Fantasy Synchro like when it stopped. I was like, I'll just... You're not the worst though. (laughs) I think I'm in second right now. So I was pretty proud of that. Good job. Thanks. All right. Um, I say let's go to Collegiate because I think Collegiate was one of the divisions that had a little bit more, I wouldn't say like upsets, but an interesting set of podiums that I think people would have probably guessed. Um, mm-hmm. And then we'll touch on novice and then, and then we'll talk about our next. Or elite 12. We forgot elite 12. Oh, we can't sorry. forget elite 12. Let's do elite 12. Okay. Um. So <laughs> we had Hayden select in first and Hawkettes in second. I think that was the order we expected, but I think that we had some definitely some surprises and like upsets that happened in there for one. Um, again, I only saw it on the plane, the short program, but yeah. I expected Hawkettes and, uh, Hayden to be closer in the short program. I think it was like a 22 point gap, which was, I think most people were pretty shocked by that. It seemed like Hawkettes were underscored. Um, from what I gather, it, they said it wasn't their best skate, but still, I think that 22 points was, um, a lot bigger of a gap than I thought just by watching it. I think. I would have still had Hayden in first after the short program. 
but I think I would have had it like maybe a 10 point gap or something. I thought it should have been a lot closer. Yeah, I would agree. I I was watching it and yes, I think Hayden selected a really, really good job this year. I think their program is really fun and interesting to watch. It's definitely um, like a new style. So that's not something we normally see. Um, But yeah, I would agree. The, The point gap in the short program was a bit much for me. Um, I'm not quite sure why, and I don't, I don't think it's fair for me to comment on like why I think the point gap is so yeah. big, but I do think it's a little bit large. I don't think that hot gets were that far behind them. Um, yeah, people, people always tell me they're like, oh, you're so good at like calling scores when, when you see the programs, I called them at closer to like a 58, 60 ish. And they ended up with yeah. a 50. So I don't know. There were that obviously must have been things that I saw that I liked and I was a little over maybe scoring. And you know, the judging panel and the tech panel were probably seeing things that like obviously I'm not a judge, I'm not a technical specialist or a technical controller that they didn't like. So, you know, it's kind of bummer because they're a first year senior elite 12 team, and I think everyone wanted them to be much closer. So yeah, I'm just going to try and pull up the score, scores from Porter because I think that they were a lot higher at Porter. I think they had around a 60. So that's kind of what I was expecting them to be around a 60 as well. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, like, I wasn't watching it like purely through like a technical eye. I was just watching it over the live stream. Um, I'm literally sitting on the plane. So, yeah. um, like, I definitely probably don't have the best perspective on that. But, um, like, I, yeah, I don't know what went wrong there, but I was expecting it to be around a 60 was kind of where I what I was thinking let's see yeah Porter they had a 57 so yeah um, expecting you expect the scores to go up and I don't think they had a bad skate so at least from like the audience perspective it yeah. didn't look bad so it was yeah. a bit surprising but I mean is what it is and then for the long um let me pull up their results from the long Hayden had a 121 and Hawkett's had a 109. I think that was a bit better. Um, yeah, I actually liked Hawkett's lifts a lot. I thought they were exciting and interesting. Um, like they had them kind of going in a cannon effect, but they did the vaults in into a clown and they vaulted out. So I really liked that because yeah. from doing the clown before, like vaulting into it, like doing like an upside down flip is kind of hard. Like we just did this the little bounce that's kind of like cheating the system. Yeah. Um, I think it's also I think they might have the same one. Is, is it Ice Fire? Or is it one of the Italian teams? I don't know. But have you seen it on Instagram? They have the really pretty dresses. Yeah. They're like the multicolor ones, no beads, but like they're doing like a abs like they, like a front flip into the clown or something like that. Yeah, they have um they have Lumineers dresses from I think it last season, the the gray ones. Mm-hmm. Um no, they vault in their creative lift is different. So um like Ice Fire or whatever team you're talking about, they they do like a they do like a front flip into like she just like a she like flips like three times before she actually like sits into the clown. Where like Hawkettes do they do like the back flip and then whoever so like whoever's being lifted, instead of like just sitting back there and like waiting for them to like pick you up, they'll like split and then the people on the legs will like go through and like push her up from the sides. And then the middle person is kind of just like like I love that though. That's so creative. It's, it's super um, cute to watch. I watched them do it on Instagram in the beginning of the season. I was like, I really hope that that's your lift. Like, please make that your lift. And they did it. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. I love that. I thought they skated a good, I thought they skated a strong long. So I'm um, yeah. happy for them with that. And then Hayden's long. <laughs> um, well, one for both Hayden Nets and elite 12, I didn't realize that you could do, you didn't have to do four lifts anymore. Or like for elite 12, you didn't have to do three that the rule changed this year. So I think it was like smart of them to be creative and kind of use that to their advantage. Cause I think they got some definitely like more creative lifts, like Hayden Nets lift for their long. Um, one I haven't seen before. I really liked that. Um, and it's smarter to kind of, you know, if you don't have to do as many lifts, you can make them look better. Why? Like, I think that's definitely very good program planning, but, uh, I think it was their elite 12. They had two girls fall prior, just prior to the lift, like going into it. So I think we were kind of confused looking at the protocols afterwards because um, I didn't like go back and watch the program a second time to see what happened. I just remember watching it in person, but I think they had the two girls go down and so they only had one lift to go up. 
Yeah. Um, getting a lift too. And they had scores between minus two and minus five, which I'm guessing that at that point, the falls didn't count as part of the lift. And I think they had four deductions because they had two interruption in excess, yeah. but, um, kind of a definitely unfortunate to see. Um, I was surprised the lift still got called with one, but I don't really know exactly how that works this year. I wasn't too up to date on the lift, um, yeah. guidelines, I guess if they must've had 50% of the people lifting, I think is what it is. Yeah, I'd have to you, go back. And, I'd have to go back and read. Yeah. Obviously, coaching novice this year, I didn't. I didn't really read too much into the the lift stuff. Um, we were worried about like yeah. other things, but um, yeah, it was a really big bummer to watch them unfortunately have a fall before their lift because you know what that's like having a oh. fall before having to put up a lift. They were fine. <laughs> yeah, that was that's that's rough. But um, I was I was very impressed that they were able to keep it together. Like they didn't let the energy drop afterwards. They didn't let oh, yeah. that one mistake. Like, which I don't think the two falls is that big of a mistake, but it kind of ruins the element in a way. But they didn't let that one like kind of I guess bigger flaw like ruin the rest of the program. They picked it back up, acted like nothing happened, like true professionals, and were able to finish out the remainder of the program really really strong. So uh, I was happy to see that, and like their scores reflected it because they still had. Like a 121 is a solid long program score. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was, it was also towards the end of their program. So I think that's also probably a bit more helpful. Like if that's the first thing that happens in your program, like you, then I think it probably might make a few people more frantic, but yeah. looking at it, they had just an intersection and a no hold left. So thankfully they were able to recover well and finish out strong. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So collegiate. Do you want to talk about just the podium for collegiate? Because I think that was I think that was the most interesting part of the because there's like 13 collegiate teams. Sure. Yeah, we could do that. And then anything else that just might have been surprising. Um, so for our podium, we had Miami in first. I think everyone expected that. They skated really well. I think they skated to Cabaret, was it? Yeah. Um people okay. I don't really have too much to comment on. They people were said that they're they were good. People were not happy with their dresses. I thought Miami's dresses were good. I thought they fit the theme. I thought they were pretty. I thought they were, they made every single girl look extremely flattering. Where like in the past, mm-hmm. like Miami's dresses, and this is probably like a long time ago, but like in the past, they've had dresses that don't make everybody look super flattering and like look super like not athletic, but like they just aren't not always as flattering as they could be. Where like this year, both senior and collegiate dresses were so pretty. They were so flattering. Mm-hmm. They made everybody look super athletic and like slim thick. Like everybody looked good. I don't know why people were talking. Yeah, about their dresses. I agree. Like sometimes you just have dresses that just don't look good on everyone. Like I'm a stumpy girl. Like my torso <laughs> is like this big. So like, sometimes it's just like, nah, this, I look like a cube. <laughs> like this like is not the, the vibe. Dresses. The Whitney dresses. Yes. Yes, I forgot about that. Yes, <laughs> there's some dress that make you look stumpy, you know, especially if you're a stumpy girl. But yeah. um, I thought that they all looked, I thought their dresses were fine. Like, I didn't think they were like the prettiest dress I've ever seen. I had no issues with it though. Like I thought it fit the program. I, yeah, I thought they were like, again, I thought they skated really well. They did exactly what I expected. There was nothing that was like overly exciting about their program to me. Like I'm not a big fan of the pair pivot, but pretty much all of the collegiate teams did the pair pivot. Yeah. Um they did it well. They're, they were in sync, but like they were they were good. They're always good. They were what I expected. They're solid. Um they're solid. Yeah. Western was in second, and I think they were at third in third at mids, and I think people just counted them out. But I was very impressed. I loved the program. I think their skating skills were not necessarily as high as some of the other teams that they skated around because they were in a really um packed flight, I believe. Like I think. I think like some of the other teams skated around them. I might've said their skating skills were slightly better, but I thought that my Western's program was filled with tricks. It was super exciting. I love the music. They skated to Kesha. The dresses worked. Everything worked for me. I was like completely on board and I was really, really happy that they ended up in second place. Same. I, I would have loved to skate a Kesha program. So shout out to their coaches, Amy and Amy. Yeah. They both have the same name, Amy and Amy. <laughs> um, shout out to them for picking a really fun set of Kesha songs I, like you said, I think their, their dresses worked. I thought they were unique and enough that like that, like cutouts and they were like 
because like skating to Kesha, you could go trashy because old Kesha was trashy. That's really what she was. Um, and they went like they went classy and it was exciting to watch. I thought their hair fit. I thought their their dresses were great. I thought their program was super exciting to watch. It was unique. Like I'm a I'm a big Western Michigan fan when it comes to to their programs. I think the last two years they've done just an awesome job. So shout out to their coaches for putting together a great package for their kids this year. Yeah, they always deliver a really, really strong team, really strong program. So it's definitely nice to see. And also like unrelated, like specific to them, but also just kind of like the entire division. Like I feel like collegiate and like has like it was collegiate and juvie really have the best music, like the most fun themes. Cause like, like they're not trying to skate to like opera. Which again, yeah. Like I we skated to opera. It was, it was a good program. It was not my favorite thing to skate to. I didn't really find it particularly fun. Yeah. Um, but ha- almost every program in collegiate, I would want to skate like Kesha or Rihanna or Prince. They're like, they always have the fun upbeat programs. I feel like it's part of the collegiate vibe. But also like if you're skating in college, like it's because you love the sport and you want to do it. Cause it's fun. Not because you're like trying to like, yeah set a new world record or something like that so i'm glad that they like they played to their strengths very very well yeah. um we yeah. had northern nets in third and shrine in fourth Ooh, big fan of northern nets i think they did having a first year collegiate team i thought they were awesome um mm-hmm. i love the prince theme for them i thought they did it really really well um i personally would have loved to see a maybe a little different style of dress and maybe a few different music selections because it it felt very um like 2016 Hayden Nets for me but that's not to say that they didn't do it well and that they like it wasn't exciting to watch that's like a personal thing for me I wish that like they would have done something just slightly different but again their first year collegiate team they came out and they won their first national medal I think that's Northern Nets actually first national medal ever if I'm not mistaken I think it might be um, yeah, they were also only 0.1 behind Western as well. So really, really tight competition, which makes so. it a bit more fun. But yeah, I'd agree. I think that the music cut and dresses were very similar to Hayden Nets. I mean, it was, it has been about what, seven, eight years. So yeah. it's like, at least it wasn't like the year afterwards, but they were, they were very, very similar. And I think, um, I heard a couple people comment on that, but they did it well. Um, they like, it'd be different if they, were not able to pull it off, but they did. Yeah. Um, and I liked it. I thought that they had some good choreography. I thought it was exciting. I thought they skated really well. Yeah. And shout out to the whole Northern S nation for, you know, rallying behind their first year collegiate team. Like they, I know in the stands, they had um, someone who would like impersonate a prince, which I thought was really fun. They all had mm-hmm. like full umbrellas. So like, that's really fun in the singer community to see like your whole club rally behind like one of your teams. So I really, I really like that for their club. Uh, and like we commented on their junior team, I'm excited to see where the Northern Nets club goes with this collegiate team. And like, you know, I, I'm just excited for them. I, I think they're the Christie sisters and their program is doing an incredible job of like growing and making sure all their teams are super successful. Like, I think they have every single one of their teams end up at nationals this year, which is not every club can say that. So completely agree. Um, and so then in fourth place, uh, we had Shrine. Um, I, almost, her I was thinking that they could come in in second, um, but definitely fourth place wasn't bad. They had a 105, and then I think the other two teams had 108. So at that point, it just comes down to who's really skating better that day. They were so close. Um, and then I think fifth place was like significantly, or not significantly lower, but like there was a gap. Like those three teams were kind of all neck and neck. Yeah. Um, yeah, you yeah. uh you fish was had a hundred points in fifth. So okay. um I thought like between Trine, Western and uh Northern Nets, it was a really close competition. Yeah, I think I think Rachel and Rosie have done a really, really, really good job um over the last two seasons with their collegiate team. Um and seeing them advertise for their elite twelve or their senior team next year, I think is gonna be really exciting to see kind of like where they go. Cause in the past they've only had collegiate. They've had open collegiate and then like open adult, which I think is a really mm-hmm. interesting division to have as a collegiate program, just because not a lot of people think about either adult or like open adult. So I wonder if like collegiate teams or like collegiate programs in the future will either advertise for like an adult team or like an open adult team. Cause it gives like people who are like in their master's programs and maybe not interested in skating full on for collegiate, if they don't have that much time. 
it's worth a shot. Yeah, but- I think it's a smart decision. Um, cause it's also like then if you have skaters that like stay in the area after college, like then they can still skate. Like, cause not everybody like if you're moving out to, I don't think everyone who goes to try and is really from Indiana, but if they're staying in the area, cause they got a job or something, then like, it still gives them something else to do. Or I think for a lot of teams, like, like Chris Lett's always had their adult team, which was really good. Hayden has their adult teams, which are really good. Shout out EDC for winning nationals in both adult and master, especially after not even qualifying last year, like yeah. huge for them. But um, yeah, I think it's definitely a, something that maybe more collegiate teams should look into. I think Delaware has a really good adult team or they always did. I don't know about this season, but if they, I think that's something that should definitely become a bigger thing because they'd probably get a lot of skaters that would be interested in skating adult. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see kind of like what trying does in the future. Cause like I said, another advertising for, you know, this coming season to potentially have an either elite 12 team or a senior team. So who knows what they're going to do, but yeah, yeah. I'm excited for them. they've really built up the organization like very quickly and very successfully. Like, I think they got their first national medal two years ago. Uh-huh. Um, and I think they've been on the podium the past, I think they got second last season and then fourth this year, but still like they're they're crushing it they're definitely like pulling a lot of skaters to their school and it's always nice if you're skating for free because skating is an expensive sport so if you can balance that in college um that's huge especially if you can skate senior in college and not have to pay out of pocket for that in addition to school so yeah yeah. um love that for them um and then should we touch on novice quickly as well yeah, let's touch on novice because let's talk about our uh, novice national champions teams elite with a one oh nine, like crazy. Um, also sh- t- shout out teams elite for literally sweeping every division. They got they won juvenile, intermediate, novice, and junior won every division they competed in, and honestly, it was well deserved. Every team came out and absolutely attacked. They slayed it. Like I, yeah. we watched novice official and teams elite novice official wasn't really that good. I'm not going to lie. It looks yeah. like they had a few mistakes, which is fine because it's official. Um, but it definitely didn't look like their strongest. And I was like, you know what? I don't I don't know if they have it in the bag. And then they came out for the competition and blew me away. And again, they skated first and they won the entire event. So love it when you have a team that can come out, set the bar that high, and then just like, just watch everybody else trying to catch them. Yeah. I think, I think they did a really, really incredible job with their, with their program design. I didn't watch a whole lot of like Midwest novice teams this year, but I just know that like their coaches do a really, really good job of making sure that everything is super intricate um, and basically designing it as if it's a junior free skate, which they scored higher than a few of the junior free skates at this event too. So it's, it's incredible to see a novice team scoring a 109 basically competing a junior free skate in the novice division. So like shout actually out to as high as some senior teams. Like shout I out believe to that, that, um, yeah. But yeah, they were incredible. Like watching them like compete, I was just like jaw on the floor, like damn. Yeah. Um so really, really loved their program. And then also uh Chris Let's novice, when I saw that official, I was like, I think that team's gonna win. I've heard that they've had an on and off season. They either skate really well or not and there's not much of an in-between and I was glad they were able to come out super super strong um because we've all been on teams like that where it's like you just don't have the consistency behind you and um they I would have never known I haven't seen them all season but they were phenomenal I thought that they looked like they could have been a junior senior team hopefully they come out with senior again next season I'm thinking that probably their novice team has some girls that were cross skating onto their elite 12 team last year. So that would bring down some experience, but, um, they always have gorgeous dresses. Um, they've always been really strong and novice. So I was glad to see as the highest team in their, in their organization. And I think the only team in their organization that might've been at nationals this season for them to come out strong with a national medal. That was awesome. They have an adult team too. I think their adult team. Oh, right. And their adult team also in so good. So good. Yeah. I think they got second. Yeah. But yeah, I love I love Chris Lutz. I think their coaches are awesome. I think, you know, they always again also do a really good job with like program design and making sure that like they highlight their skaters to make them look really good too. So shout out to Chris Lutz mm-hmm. for winning a national medal in novice. That's awesome. Yeah. 
Can I also just bring up last year, Crystalette's Elite 12 short program dresses is I think the prettiest skating dress I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> and if they were ever selling these dresses, I will buy one. I don't care how much you charge me. Like, please let me buy that dress and I'll like, wear it to work. I'll wear it to sleep. Like I, <laughs> I'll wear it every day. It's just, I, I need it. It's so pretty. Yeah. Holly, if you're listening, please sell us your uh, Senior Elite 12 short dresses last year, please. We will buy them. Please and thank please. you. <laughs> In a heartbeat, charge me a thousand dollars. Okay, actually, no, don't charge me a thousand dollars, please. I can't afford that. I'm too poor. But like, I'll pay for it. Same. Who ended up in third? Um, so in third place, we had Skyliners Novice, which I think Ooh. came out as an underdog. I don't think that people were expecting them to medal. Um, I don't know what they got at Easterns, but I know Ice Mates won Easterns. Um, I think Sky Novice compared to some of the other teams definitely looks like one of the younger novice teams out there but i was really happy with them i was super excited they skated really well they skated to the little mermaid i think mm -hmm. um and i was impressed i thought they were they were better than i was expecting just i hadn't seen them all season but hearing from the placements let me look up easterns because now i'm curious because like novice is another one of those divisions where it's all over the place yeah and i didn't get to i obviously didn't get to watch much of novice having my my team there so it's very interesting because you and megan watched all of intermediate and all of novice, right? Yes. And we watched all of novice official as well. <laughs> so you guys are at the rink the entire day. Yeah. So we were literally there the entire day. We left for like five minutes to go and get like food. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long day. We were sitting with like Hannah Brofsky in the stands. Um, I think that was that. No, was it? Yeah, it was, it was the same day because you came up afterwards. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Skyliners okay. were third at, at um, Easterns, I think. Is this okay. yeah, Whitmore? That that's bought that's the new UNH rank, right? Yes, that's where we were. Yeah, was, okay, yeah. I was like, because Boston Fusion just came around this year. Okay, I was reading this wrong. I thought I said they had a 60. So I was like, how do they get a 60 at Easterns and get like a 90 something at national? No, they had a 90 at Eastern, so that makes wow. more sense. My vision's just bad. But um, <laughs> yeah, they were third at Easterns. So um team image was second and ice mates won. So yeah, I think that's why we weren't necessarily expecting um Sky Novice to come out with a national medal, just because the novice division is so stacked between them and between the East Coast and the Midwest. But it's yeah. also so fun how it could change up. I was really happy that they were able to come out and really perform when it mattered. Um and I'm sure it was so exciting for all of those girls, especially like coming in third at Easterns and getting third at nationals and beating all those other teams that like that's yeah. so exciting. That's um, anytime you medal in like novice, like it's, it's nice when you see all the skaters are really excited to get their medal and like to place there rather than being like disappointed, like rather than being disappointed that they ended up in second and didn't win. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, this is hard. and then fourth place, we had team image, um, trying to remember which I feel like it was similar to their junior program. I don't. I'm, not, I'm having a hard time remembering their program, but I do remember they were really good. They had, I thought they were like their junior long, long dresses from last year or two years ago. They looked similar to that, the blue ones. Yep. That they had, that's what their, their dresses were. They were similar to their junior dresses from last year. Um, but they skated really well. They were definitely running around all excited, um, underneath, underneath the rink. So I was really happy for them being able to, yeah you know, win a national medal. Like you said, in novice, anytime winning a national medal in novice is, is really, really hard. So being able to, to get on the podium is, is insane because novice is so tough. Absolutely. And I also think like shout out to team image as an organization. Cause I think they're the only other organization who meddled in every division that they had teams. And I'm pretty sure they meddled in GV intermediate novice and junior, um, teams elite one all four, which is like, mind-blowing but i think team image is the only one who managed to medal in all of them um because i think skyliners i don't know if they're intermediate team medaled they were um, close. they were fifth yeah and team image was third in intermediate and i believe they also won a medal in gv if i'm not wrong let me yeah. see yeah they were third in gv so shout out to team image like coming through super strong um anyone else in novice that we want to talk about northern nuts were fifth so very close to the podium for them yep. um they were they missed it by 0.06 oh god which really hurts i kind of i mean i liked team image a lot too but i almost wish for those girls that they could have gotten a medal for the first time 
Like yeah. that would have meant so much to them. And I did really like the program. I liked the dresses. I thought they were good. They skated to Halo. Um, that's crazy how close they were though. Oh my God. Yeah. Novice man. Um, and then ice mates were in six, which I think was a bit disappointing because like they won Easterns. Um, yeah. they were the only team that was trying for a pivot block four, which I really, really enjoyed to watch. I thought they were really good. Um, interesting music choice. I never would have, they skated to uh, forever young, which I wouldn't have expected to be a program kind of like how we wouldn't have expected jobs to Jupiter, but I liked it. I liked their dresses. Um, I really liked, they were trying for harder elements, but I think that, um, in the quest for that, they missed a couple calls on them. And so that's probably it's a, it's a risk and sometimes it pays off and sometimes it doesn't. And not saying it didn't pay off, but just like with some teams skating lights out, then it just kind of was a bit harder to, um, perform all of those. Um, anyone else we want to talk about in novice? I'm just going to give a big shout out to my team in novice. Um, we, it was our first nationals as an organization. So, really happy for all my kids for getting there. I think, you know, as a coach, you can only ask for your best out of all of your kids. And I think every single one of the kids that we brought with us this weekend or this past weekend at nationals put out their absolute best. And I could not have asked for more as a coach out of my first experience with them. Like I'm so incredibly proud to like have been their coach for this year and like seeing where we're going to go in the future. I think it's I think they should be extremely proud of themselves because I think we didn't really give ourselves any like point goals. I know in my brain, I was like, ex I was looking for like a certain like point number, but you know, they came and they skated, they did their absolute best. And I know some of them were a little bit disappointed because it was slightly lower scoring than what we got at Easterns, but like, I'm elated with how they skated. Like, like I said, I couldn't ask for anything more. I'm super proud of them. I hope they're all really proud of themselves. And I hope they're really excited to, to go on to next season, because I think we have most of our kids staying, at least from my understanding at the moment, we have most of our kids staying. Um, so it'd be really fun to see where we can go and how we can push them next year, but shout out to Eastern elite. You guys are, you guys are awesome. Be happy with your skate. Be proud of yourselves. Cause we know your coaches are proud of you. So, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, also one other thing in just novice uh, dazzlers. I thought that their dresses were like whatever, whoever designed their dresses, genius. It was possibly my favorite Michael Jackson dress I have ever seen. Yeah. Um, like lots of teams have skated to it. And I think that was possibly the most genius, like perfect dress design I've ever seen. So absolutely loved it. Um, yeah. Anything else? That's kind of it for nationals. I really yeah. would, I would like to say if US figure skating is listening, Maybe let's not do Las Vegas for a while. Um, because again, I got sick and I don't like being sick. Um, today is the first day, like I said, like I feel like a human. Um, but I think we should plan for nationals um maybe somewhere in um, the East Coast. The East Coast. I would prefer that. Love the East Coast. Madison yeah. Square Garden, New York City. <laughs> I don't think, I think that costs way too much money and it would be empty. It would look empty, but, um, I don't know where would be fun for nationals. I, again, like one of my fa favorite nationals was Portland, Maine in 2009. Yep. Um, that was one of my favorites. I love Maine a lot. So that would be cool. Um, Florida, Florida would be nice. Come to Florida. I go to Florida. Uh, you can have that at the Pensacola Bay center if you want. I'm sure they'd be willing. The, team, the organization here would absolutely love that. Shout out Greater Pensacola Figure Skating Club. Um, <laughs> or like Tampa or, you know, like Miami. I think they have like some like open jube teams and stuff out in those areas. So, you know, come to Florida. That'd be fun. Um, I would do that. Or else, yeah. Like give people a good place to like go to. Because I don't think there's any teams in Vegas. So if we're, if we're doing places where there's not a synchro team, then let's go somewhere warm and festive and fun. I'd go back to the Dunkin' Donuts Center. i go back I to the Dunkin' Donuts. I Dunk. One of the best. Hmm. But yeah, Actually, I don't think you can do Pensacola because there's no other rinks nearby. The closest rink is Birmingham. That's like four and a half hours. You can't send people there to practice. <laughs> no, you can't have you can't have practice ice there. That's not nice. Or you could practice at the uh, 
they they do set up a um, little piece of ice in Orange Beach, Alabama, at like the outdoor like shopping center in the winter that you can go skate on for like funsies, festive. But it's like a little teeny tiny like baby rink in a tent. That wouldn't work either. <laughs> we could do that, but no, I don't think that would work. It's like maybe like you know, have you been to Marlboro at NESC and they have the little um baby practice ice for like it's like yeah. rink six and a half. It's like that size. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's like in Fond du Lac where they have, so that Fond du Lac has three sheets of ice at blue line. They have rink a, which is like their big, like NHL size rink or no, sorry. Their Olympic size rink B is their NHL size rink. And then they have C, which is like a small, like not even a half, like half sheet. And they use it for like learn to skate and stuff like that. So yeah. Yeah. yeah I know hmm. the, the little rinks is like, yeah anywhere else that would be fun i'd go back california to california is a good time but still kind of far yeah but yeah that's our that's our nationals recap a little fantasy synchro um i don't know what our next podcast will be about probably about junior worlds maybe um huh. kind of talking about what teams are there kind of what we think is going to happen um but yeah thanks for listening to our podcast guys cool see you See you later.